after writing two transformational books myself and supporting many other beings to do the same, I've become enthralled by the deep and mysterious magic that's activated when we choose to say yes to ourselves and commit to the book writing journey. Of course, we want to inspire change and new perspectives in our readers, but the transformation that happens as an author, both throughout the writing process and by actually releasing your book into the world is surprisingly potent. I know I've been blindsided in the most disruptive and delicious ways by some of the changes my books have brought into my life. Writing a book is like casting a spell. Although we can never be completely sure what's going to be unleashed during the process, we choose to do it anyway. This Unbound One is a heroic journey. Each book has the potential to be a magical portal, a doorway to a new world, both for you and your reader. Each book has a very specific medicine that it's here to share with us. And each book gives us the opportunity to alchemize the magnificent imperfection of our experience into gold. The truth is that anyone can write a book. We could all get a few thousand words down and put them together. But what fascinates me is what happens when we allow the book writing process to go deeper. When we say, fuck it, get naked and dive way down beneath the surface letting go of the shoulds and any need to be acceptable, sensible or approved of. What fascinates me is what happens when we make ourselves fully available to being transformed by the very act of writing a book. This is Unbound Writing and this is the process we'll be exploring together here in the Unbound Writers Club. I'm Nicola Humber, author and founder of The Unbound Press, and I help magical beings to write the transformational book they're really here to write at this time. I'm your guide here in The Unbound Writers Club, and the aim of this podcast is to help you to feel supported, encouraged, activated as you embark on your book writing journey. Whether you're a first-time author or have many books out in the world, my hope is that you will find something here to inspire you. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to the Unbound Writers Club. Today I am joined by a returning guest, Carrie Myers. Carrie is the curator of Soul Shine, a collaborative book that was released through the Unbound Press last year in November 2022. And that sparked an idea for the next evolution of Soul Shine which we're going to be talking about in this conversation, and you are invited to be part of it. It involves global orgasms. So I'm just leaving that here. (laughs) If you're not intrigued about that, then, you know, switch off. But if you want to know more, let's dive into this conversation with Carrie. The Carrie, welcome back to the Unbound Writers Club. Thank you. I am so excited to be here. (laughs) Oh, me too. I kind of feel like you're almost part of the team at the Unbound Press. (laughs) Like we get to co-create so much together. It's amazing. I am honored to be a part. Oh, I mean, you ladies are all amazing. And the more I meet other authors, I'm just blown away with the wisdom and just the heart. Yeah. That is in this team. It's very special. Very special. And, you know, I always begin these conversations with the same question, which I know I've asked you before, but I feel like it shifts and changes from kind of year to year, month to month, day to day. So right now in this moment, what does it mean to you to be an unbound writer? Um, It means to be creative and to let my writing flow. And then after I complete a project, flow into something else and to build on each other. Um, And just like when spirit or inspiration hits me, just let it flow and not worry about what anybody thinks or if it's the correct way to do it and just let it go. I love that. I love that. 
and that that's really what we're going to be talking about today because at the end of last year um in november 22 2022 soul shine the collaborative book was released into the world and even before it was released there was this other idea for kind of a sequel to soul shine and soul shine was all about women like becoming who they've always meant to be after maybe dimming their lights and like people pleasing and focusing on what everyone else wants you know really stepping into their fullest expression and allowing their souls to shine but then you mentioned this other idea following on from soul shine which is sensual soul shine and I wonder if you could just Talk a little bit about how that idea started to come through for you, Carrie. Well, as um, as Soul Shine was making its way into the world, and I was talking to other women about, um, you know, how they've dimmed their light and how they're going, if they haven't already, but how they're going to shine their authentic soul, what is meant to be in this world. And, you know, these conversations, especially as women, we flow through all kinds of ways we dimmed ourselves. and sex and sensuality came up a lot Mm. and so I thought well why not do a sensual soul shine about women reclaiming their sensuality their softness their um their confidence in a way of being in the world as as women um I think that we live in such a masculine linear go 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 push 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 world that we even as women have evolved to be more masculine and we forget that we are supposed to be soft and we are supposed to be sensual and we're just carry ourselves differently. Mm. So that's what sparked it. (laughs) Yeah. I love it. I mean, as soon as you mentioned it, I was like, yes, I am definitely, I'm definitely in for this. And I feel really called to contribute like a piece for this one as well, because it's definitely a journey that I've been on, like rediscovering and reclaiming my sensuality, my sexuality after so many years of just not even thinking about it, you know, not even acknowledging that part of myself. And like you say, just being focused on like what I was here to do in the world and working and education and all of those things rather than who I was here to be. So I feel really passionate about this. I mean, what about your own experience, Carrie? Because I'm guessing like you've obviously been on a journey with this yourself for it to to call to you. Right. I, I used to feel really sensual. And and my husband agreed that I was very sensual and um, we had a really amazing sex life for a long time. And then we, we went through something horrific in our marriage and um, it really like put a kibosh, right. Mm. On how I felt about myself and um, blaming myself for a lot of stuff that happened Um, I mean, he had an affair and it made me feel like I wasn't good enough. I wasn't sexy enough and all that stuff. And so it really shut down my, um, my sensual side, my, my way of surrendering sensually and sexually. And I'm still on this journey. It's, it's better, but it's, I'm not back to where I desire to be. So I'm still working on that, um, you know, like feeling good in my body, dressing like I want to dress or feel good being out in the world dressed, um, you know, being healthier and more fit and just taking that time to myself to recreate Mm -hmm. who I was when Mm -hmm. I felt more sensual in the world. Yeah. And how amazing that you know, you know what that experience was like, you had had that experience and in your relationship as well. And like you say, like, I know, you know, I know it's really difficult to talk about challenging times, like particularly in our relationships and our, you know, marriages, because, you know, it's so personal and tender. So thank you so much for sharing with us, Carrie. But I love that 
you know, you have a very strong sense of who you are as a sensual being, as a sensual woman. So in this process of kind of rediscovering that for yourself. And what were some of the stories that you've heard or the kind of themes that were coming through from different women, different people you were connecting with, having these kind of conversations around, in particular, like sensual soul shine? Well, it ranges from not feeling confident in the world to not feeling satisfied in the bedroom yeah. and not having that connection with their partner. Um, so some of my friends are like, oh, well, I couldn't put myself out there because I'm overweight or this and I can't wear this and I can't do this. And then other ones are like, I've never had an orgasm with my partner mm. uh, and in that connected way. And so I think after I've like thought about it and put it all out there, that the biggest part of sensuality besides confidence is connection yeah. and it, connection to ourselves and connection to our partners, whoever that we choose to, mm. to be a partner with. I don't foresee this book being about like, you know, picking up every guy at the bar and taking them home and, you know, conquering the mill or you know, just put, you know, put yourself out there in that way. Um, but if that's your story, yeah. if that's your story. If that's what you needed to do to, to find who you are um, centrally. But I see it more as rediscovering a connection within. Yeah. And then allowing that to, to flow out into a connection with others. Yeah. Especially your, your sexual partner. Yeah. Yeah. So. There's lots, lots of different flavors of like sensuality, sexuality. Um, you know, obviously people have had a whole range of experience. So um, I just feel like it's going to be really powerful to capture that the different journeys that that people have been on, that women have been on. Um, and I know for me, actually, when we were having a conversation about it, recently I feel like what I want to write about is that kind of personal connection with myself I you know I spoke to you about how my relationship with my body has really changed as I as I got older and I went for a period of time you know when I was starting to navigate perimenopause and you know obviously I, like allowing my hair to kind of to go gray and my silver to come through but also the way my body has changed over the past um kind of five to ten years was challenging for me in a lot of ways and over the past in particular year I really feel like I've connected with my body in a different way and I'm really interested to write something about that and to explore it so I feel like that's the angle I'm going to be coming from but there's so much potential here isn't there for for people to be writing about different aspects of their sensuality right and I think what what you're talking about is very important too because you know we all were different beings in our 20s and and mm. you know, I'm in menopause too and and how in a way, there's a lot of freedom as you don't have to worry about getting pregnant and mm -hmm. all that stuff um, in our sensuality. But then our bodies change and we don't think our bodies look as good as they did in our 20s. And so that puts a little like barrier up for us, you know, confidence wise. So it it's just like it could be explosive the way that this this book could go. Absolutely. Yeah. Bring it on. I'm all for it exploding. <laughs> for it exploding. All right. so, so we want this, this book to go out and, and create, uh, create an orgasm in the world, right? Like a ripple effect through a ripple effect through women. They're like, yes, I'm going to own my pleasure. Yes. I'm going to own my confidence. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to be softer. I don't have to be this hard go get them kind of person and and people pleaser all the time yeah exactly well you heard it here first essential soul shine is going to create 
a global orgasm that is rippling out into the world. So get ready for it. Get ready for it. Do you want to be part of it? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That might have been a little much, but oh, I love I'm it. It's never too much. That's never too it's... much. You know that. Sensual and... revolution 2023. Exactly. Exactly. And and the intention is again that you know Soul Shine came out in November 2022. And we would love for Sensual Soul Shine to come out like in November time in 2023. As we were speaking there, Carrie, I was thinking like so many of us <laughs> picked up messages about our bodies and about our sexuality and pleasure as we were growing up. It's something I write about in Unbound, actually, like pleasure is one of the like key principles of living unbound. And I think for many of us, we receive the message that pleasure, like our pleasure is somehow wrong. Like it's wrong for a woman to be in her pleasure or to be focused on that. And I wonder if that was your experience when you were growing up at all. Um, it, it was not so much that pleasure was wrong, but that, you know, sex was something to be quiet about and to wait till marriage and to, you know, just be with one partner and, so some some shame around it if that wasn't your story. Mm. Yeah. You know, like if you weren't the good girl, right? Like yeah. if you weren't the good girl and wait till marriage and you know, do all the all the things right. Um so there was a lot of shame placed around it. And like I don't I don't know, it's really hard to explain. Mm. Um but I do I do understand how a lot of women go the way that they aren't meant to experience pleasure and they're supposed to take their people pleasing ways into the bedroom. Yeah. And um, I mean, luckily I have a partner who, who wants to give as much as receive. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's very important uh, in finding a partner to be with and connect with. But uh, a lot of women don't have that. And, and a lot of women don't feel that they deserve it or they're too tired, or they don't feel appreciated in other ways in their life. So they're just like, can we just get this over with? Yeah. And they forget that they're, they're a part of it and they deserve as much as, as are, should be giving, not even should mm. as, as is given. Yeah, exactly. We don't need shoulds. We no, we, we don't. We don't. <laughs> Sometimes they creep in, you know, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> And I feel like there are a lot of shoulds when it comes to sex and sensuality. So um, part of this process, I mean, I really see sensual soul shine, um, you know, in a similar way to the first book. But, you know, all of the contributors, we get to go on a journey together, like exploring these different themes and our different experiences and, I feel like some of the conversations that we get to have as a as a group as we're writing our pieces, you know, it's going to spark off ideas. So if somebody's listening to this and feeling like, oh, this sounds really interesting, but I'm not quite sure, you know, what my piece to offer would be, I would just say if you if you're feeling that call cool at all, then you know we've got an invitation page for you to have a look at, and you don't need to know exactly what you're going to write about at this stage very often it becomes clear during the process right I I am a huge um, supporter of journaling mm. um, one of my yoga programs is about is about journaling and um, I often say we don't know what we're thinking often until we write it or speak it and then it like we, we, we get taken aback and we're like, oh gosh, was that really inside my head or inside my heart? And so just write, write it out and that something will come through. Exactly. It definitely will. It definitely will. And we've got some amazing prompts that both Carrie and I have put together, um, you know, to get you started in the process. And we will be having group writing sessions on Zoom and opportunities to connect with the other contributors, which is part of the, the joy and the pleasure of these collaborative books, the connections that get to be made. And I know that really happened with Soul Shine. Um, on the release day, I got to meet up with a few of the contributors like locally to where I was and 
one of them FaceTimed you as we were having lunch. And it was just so lovely to have that connection. Yeah, creating that community of support is uh, like there's no words for being a part of strong, supportive, loving women who aren't about competition or jealousy. They're just they're just there to, you know, just hold you in their beautiful energy. Okay. And that is really what's what soul shine has been. And I know sensual soul shine when we get deep down and personal about who we really are and uh, dive deep into our sensual side, our feminine side, that there will be a lot of trust built in exactly. this community. And, and that's the beauty, doing it together. I think it can feel, you know, vulnerable when we are like revealing a part of ourselves and our experience um and obviously if you're writing a solo authored book then you know you're like we always want to support you with that at the unbound press but you know that is a an individual process whereas these collaborative books we get to come together and like the support within the circle of writers is really powerful as well so powerful and and like i would never have met some of the beautiful people that that I've met. I mean, these women, they inspire me in so many ways they they don't even know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, the journey continues. The journey continues yeah. with Central Soul Shine. And and like what's your what's your vision for this book, Carrie? What's your intention for Central Soul Shine? My intention is to help women just rediscover their feminine side and remember that it's okay to be soft mm-hmm. and okay to receive pleasure as mm. well as give it um, and it's okay to be confident in how you dress and who you are from every aspect of your life mm. and just owning that feminine glow that that has been squashed for a long time in this world um, and our wisdom oh there's so much wisdom within us absolutely Absolutely. So much wisdom within our bodies, you know, which I feel gets suppressed because, you know, you talked about kind of that shutting down that can happen for lots of different reasons at different points in our life and throughout our lives. So to really kind of reawaken though that aspect of us, I feel, yeah, it's going to be going to be powerful and exciting. Reawaken a curiosity that we probably had when we were much much younger um and you know we dreamed of romance and we dreamed of of all this stuff and sometimes it's just not how life works out but we have the power within us to to grab what we are Mm. meant to be right just take it because we deserve it exactly and it's a release and it's it it just allows you to surrender and be open and vulnerable, but yet be powerful in your sensuality. So Mm -hmm. that creates this beautiful balance as to what women truly are. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're really interested, like I said, in all the different expressions of that, what it looks like for each individual. Um, So if you are feeling the call to be part of Central Soul Shine, we will put the link to the invitation page in the show notes. Um, But you can just message either Carrie or I or the Unbound Press and we will make sure that you get that. We're looking for up to 23 contributors, 23 for 2023, because, you know, why not? But always like the perfect constellation of beings forms in these books. So if you are interested at all, please do let us know and we can let you have all the details and see what wants to see what wants to come through. It's going to be phenomenal, I know. And it's going to inspire so many women in our world. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Carrie, like for for following the threads from Soul Shine to Sensual Soul Shine. Who knows what the next one will be? <laughs> Something will come up, I assure you. <laughs> exactly. It definitely will. It definitely will. It's always to be continued. But yeah, really looking forward to this next unfolding and... Like I said, just reach out if you want to be part of it. Um, We're going to be getting going pretty soon. So, yeah, let's see. Let's see what wants to come through. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you.